for our webinar, everybody. I'm glad you could join us for this month's edition of Webinar Wednesday. My name is Joe O'Donnell, the Senior Technical Engineer and Instructor at Terrapin Technology. And this month, we're going to be talking about a subject that has come up quite frequently over the last couple of months. So I thought it would be relevant to talk about how to do e-signatures. And specifically, we're going to focus on using Adobe Acrobat for this. Now, I, I don't know if, if you're currently using something, but why don't we run a quick little poll to see uh, what everybody is currently using. I have a little survey that I'm just going to push out to you real quick. And if you feel, if you want to, you can answer that uh, in, the, uh, in the chat there. We'll just get your input on this. E-signatures is something that's coming up. I mean, obviously the pandemic and everything just kind of exploded the use of, well, we're, I should say exploded and also uh, rushed everybody to how to do e-signatures and can we do e-signatures? And obviously there are, uh, there are different areas of law that will dictate whether or not you can or cannot. We're not really going to get into that on, you know, the, uh, the legalities of e-signatures versus a wet signature and what you need. Uh, you have a you have a firm full of attorneys that can likely debate that and find out what uh, what works for you. But if it does work, finding out what applications and what services to use can sometimes be a little bit of a headache. And that's what we found for a, a lot of our, our clients and uh, what they're working with. So it looks like a lot of you are currently using uh, e-signatures, but many of you are not. Uh, so we'll, we'll look forward to kind of going over what's available and uh, how we can uh, how we can uh, work with that. So you'll see there's a few things there when it comes to are you currently using e-signatures? And then uh, if you're using them, what are you using? It looks like a lot of you are using Adobe Acrobat in the sign, Adobe Sign. And then what's your biggest hurdle? Well, we'll find out what those are. Maybe we can talk about them in just a minute. So let's get back to our presentation on uh, using e-signatures. The, the reason I thought we would focus on Adobe Acrobat is that this is what most people have. In many situations in the past, we, even ourselves, we used to use alternatives to Adobe Acrobat. Um, you know, just being honest, for, because of the price point, it, it, it was horribly expensive. And uh, not the easiest application to learn how to use, though once you learned it, uh, you're kind of pigeonholed into the Adobe art infrastructure and how that worked. Nonetheless, when Adobe introduced their subscription model, uh, specifically for the document cloud, which you know one of those is Adobe Acrobat and uh, Adobe Acrobat for Teams, which is what a lot of you are using, uh, it's, that's a lot like the Microsoft Office M365, where you can license the Microsoft Office desktop applications to Microsoft. Adobe has a similar off, uh, offer for its products. And the price point for it was very, very reasonable. I think for the most part, it's around $203 a year for a user, uh, a licensed user. And that gives them uh, a lot of extra value added features. So obviously you get the Adobe Acrobat Professional that everybody knows and is familiar with. And it also gives you the ability to use Adobe Acrobat online, which incorporates not only their website, but also any of uh, on your mobile devices, you would log in with your user ID and password and be able to use it there. And obviously what we're talking about today, the signature feature uh, buried within Adobe Acrobat allows you to be able to yourself sign things and authenticate them, but more importantly, to be able to uh, fill out a form and say where you want a signature, send it to somebody else, it will track it uh, just like it would with like DocuSign, Sign Now, and other uh, services, and then deliver it back to you. And the benefit, it's all included with the Adobe Acrobat subscription that you have. There's no additional service fees or et cetera with that. So I wanted to go over how to do this within Adobe Acrobat. Uh, it's very, very easy to do. And one, th one side note, with a lot of these subscriptions when it comes to e-signatures, they track them differently. Now, with Adobe Acrobat, 
Uh, I did ex a pretty good extensive research on this and I, I hit up our Adobe reps on this and also our distributors on Adobe Acrobat and their, and their channels on it to find out, hey, are there any restrictions? I could not find any realistic uh, restrictions on you know, how many signatures can you include in a document? How many can you send out per month? Right now, there's no limitation on that. So if you needed to have 10, you know, five, 10 people sign a document, you could put fields for their signatures and send it out to all those people. And there's no additional uh, cost involved. Now with some of the other services that uh, do e-signatures and for documents or whatnot, they charge a form or an envelope fee per signature. So each signature in a document is considered an envelope and you, you pay for each one that you send out for each signature that you have. So if you had five people that it was going to and there's five signatures in the document, that would be five envelopes and that's your five sends uh, or so per month or however many you get. So all the more reason to look at something if you've already invested in Adobe Acrobat, why not take advantage of a service that's already there? And it, as well, you know, like I said, you can use it on your desktop application, you can use it on your mobile phone, your iPad, or you can use it from the website. So how exactly do you e-sign a PDF? Very simply, if you're doing it for within the Adobe Acrobat desktop application, whether this is in Windows or on a Mac, it works exactly the same. Now the toolbar options may be uh, depending on the Mac or the Windows version, maybe at the top or along the right-hand side. But either way, you're going to click on the sign icon that looks like a little pen, uh, like a quill pen on the toolbar. And if it's not there, then you can always go to Tools on the, uh, the menu bar inside of Adobe Acrobat and type in Sign or Fill in Sign, and it would show up for you, and you could add that to your toolbar. Once you've done that, then it's just a matter of choosing what do you want to do. So do you want to fill it out and sign it yourself or do you want to request signatures? So you, at this point, they provide you that choice and you fill out uh, what you're going to do. After you do that, very simply, you're going to fill out where the fields are gonna be filled out. Now, part of the, the signature feature that's built into Adobe for this, it's a lot like filling out a form not just signatures, because they know that whenever you fill out something for signature, it could be that you just need to sign something or ask somebody to sign something somewhere. But it could also be that you may need to ask more information, like you may want them to have their typed name and typed position or an address and the signature and things like that. So it will incorporate or give you the ability to add these additional fields into the form as you are going through the signature process of sending this out to somebody. So you can hover over a field. If there's a field already in there, you can specify you know, what color and how you want this to sign and who you want to sign it. Once you click on that signature icon, you have the option for adding a signature or adding initials so you can choose what type of signature you want. Uh, for some documents, you may need to initial the corners or certain areas of the page, or it may need a full signature of the recipient. If you are adding in the actual signature, you have the ability, like a lot of the other services, to either draw in your name, you can type it in using several different fonts that are available that make it you know, look like a signature, but it's a, a typed font. Or you, if you have an image of your actual signature, you can add or import that in. It'll give you the option for choosing the picture of that signature and adding it into the document to use as your signature uh, that way. And then once you do that, again, just like some of the other signature services you may have been accustomed to using, it'll ask you to save it and then it'll apply it and make that available from, that, from this point moving forward where you can select that signature and, uh, and work with it. Now, once that's done, you have the ability, now this is especially relevant for when you import a scanned image of a signature. Many times it may be a lot smaller, depending on the resolution, or much bigger. And this will give you the ability to resize that so it fits on the page where you want it to go.
And again, that, that plays specifically a part of if you're importing an image, but also if you typed it in and maybe it added it into the document, but it was slightly too small or too big and you wanted to adjust it, you can resize it using the little handles on the corner of the signature block once it adds it in there. Now, once you signed it, if, if you signed it yourself and you've added in the other people that it needs to go to, then it's a matter of sending it out to those individuals so that they can sign it. Now, normally when you are, you are signing something, or I should say when you are requesting a signature from somebody, Adobe gives you the option of a simple format of, is it going to just one person? Is it going to multiple people? Or do you need to do some advanced editing to it, which I had kind of hinted at earlier. So this is where you'll first get started once you've specified where you want to have your signatures. Now you can specify who is going to be doing the signing. And this is all based, as you can imagine, on email addresses. So you would add the signers, add their email addresses in there. You can type in a, a short little summary so they know it's coming from you. And just as a best practice on this, because there is so much fraud when it comes to uh, through email and signing documents, I think we're all familiar with the, the well-formatted phishing emails that we'll get that'll ask you for, hey, you have a DocuSign, hey, you have an Adobe sign, uh, hey, you have a uh, Dropbox document or et cetera with information. So as a best practice for myself, if I'm going to be sending somebody a document requesting their signature, I give them a heads up to expect it. And that's a courtesy because that way if they do receive it, they'll be like, oh yes, I was expecting this. I will go ahead and fill it out. Whereas if they weren't and you didn't give them the notification, they're gonna be suspicious. It may sit in their spam folder and they may be like, well, I, I wasn't expecting this. I'm not gonna pay attention to it. Yeah which is good, that's good training. But at the same time, you send something that may be time sensitive. So just as a courtesy, it's always good to send them maybe a small email or something to let them know about what's coming, that it won't be a spam, who it's coming from and what to expect. Okay, so now once we fill out who it's gonna go to, we're getting ready to send this. We have a little bit more information we're gonna fill out before we actually send it. And when you have this, you have the additional fields that you can add into a, uh, into a document, specifically once you've added their email addresses in, where they're gonna be filling out the signatures of this document. So just as an example, here's a screenshot here. If you had multiple signers, <clears throat> you would have the, uh, the ability to select that signer on the right-hand side, and you could drag a field into the document where you want them to sign. In this case here, you'll notice in the screenshot, there is an advanced editing option that's turned on. Now, when advanced editing is turned on, you'll see there's an additional highlighted area that shows up, not just the recipient's email, but all these additional fields that you can add. So just as an example, this is the simple view right here, and this is the advanced view. So with the simple view, you'll see you just have the email addresses and all you would do is you would take a person and you would drag their name or their email address to where you want them to sign. With the advanced mode, like you see right here, you can do that, but you have additional things you can add in here. Such for example, you have um, uh, data fields or you have a signer info fields like uh, their title or their address or their phone number. Uh, there's also where it has data fields. That's where you would have things such as uh, today's date. Now, they wouldn't have to fill it in, but as soon as they sign it, it would put a date in that field for you automatically in that location. So obviously, you have more options than just doing the simple one, like this one right here. This is the simple one. Drag and drop their name to where you want them to sign. The advanced mode gives you the option of being able to select additional things or fields that you want in the document that you want them to fill out. Okay, now once you have placed all those things into the document, then it's just a matter of clicking the send button. Now, once you click send, you're gonna get a page just like this. It's gonna send an email to each of those recipients if it was more than one. They're gonna get that, they're gonna click on it. It's gonna go to Adobe's services or their sign now site, and they're gonna fill that out. 
And you'll be able to track that too, both within the Adobe desktop application or online through your adobe.com account on who has received the email, who has filled it out, who you're still waiting on, uh, and so forth. So essentially, that's how you send out a PDF to be signed by somebody. So the question is, as a recipient of this, what does it look like on my end? So if you were sending, sending this to me, what does it look like? Well, let's talk about that experience. It's pretty simple. On the left over here, this is an example email that a recipient would receive. They would receive an email just like this to say, so-and-so has sent you a, uh, a document to sign and there will be a link in it. When they click that link, it's a lot like uh, if you have use DocuSign, Sign Now. Uh, Adobe uses the same type of service where it takes you to a website, it opens up the document, uh, it'll ask you to allow, uh, you, know, you know, where you are and the position and the, and the cookies and things like that. And then it'll ask you to pick out a signature type that you wanna use. It'll take you through the document and ask you to fill out certain information, including your signature, and then there'll be a complete button. Once you complete that, then it's going to save that document. It's going to email you a copy of the signed document. It's going to notify and email a copy of the document to the person who sent it to you as well. Now, if there were multiple people as part of this uh, experience where you're asking for signatures, it's going to notify the person who sent it to you that so-and-so has signed their document. And of course, you're waiting on X, Y, and Z if there are additional people. Once everybody has signed it, then those people who you sent it to, they would then get a finalized copy automatically, and then you would get the finalized copy as well via email as an attachment. Now, in, a, in addition to the attachment, you also have the ability of logging into your adobe.com website, uh, your account, and you would be able to see, download, and get the document that way as well, as well as a full audit history of when they signed it, where they signed it, and things like that. So a lot of options on what you can do. One of the things, and I, I put this on the, on the screen here on the right, you'll recognize this as the signature panel, which a lot of us see when you're filling out a e-signature uh, within Adobe or other services. But this also works on a mobile phone. So uh, just as an example, I could, if I have Adobe Acrobat on my phone and I'm logged in with my service, I could pull up the document and press the button for sign and fill. And I don't have to send it out. I'm signing it right now and I can give it to the person and they could sign with their finger on my phone on the document and save it and you're done. Or you could do that in iPad. So if you're meeting with a client and you need them to sign something right then and there, you can do that with an Adobe using the sign and fill and you can do that. The other option is if you do send it to somebody else and they open it on their mobile phone, it would open it within the Adobe service or if they do have Adobe Acrobat installed, even if it's not uh, a licensed version, because you sent it to them, it will allow them to fill out the form and sign it with their finger on their mobile device and then submit it uh, right from their mobile device. So a, a really nice experience Again, all included within your Adobe uh, services that you're subscribing to for Adobe Acrobat. Now, there are other integrations that are really, really nice with this. And I wanted to draw out one of them, which, with, which is integrating it with Microsoft 365. If you have an Adobe uh, subscription, you can link that with your Microsoft 365. Now, this will be something that your administrator, whoever administers your uh, Microsoft 365 account would have to do for you. But once that link is there, that integration, when you click on a PDF uh, online, so this is not on your desktop computer, but let's say you're, you're at the portal.office.com and you're looking at a file either in an email, it could be a PDF attachment, or it was in your OneDrive folder or SharePoint, and you clicked on the PDF, you would have the ability to edit that PDF, make comments in it, uh, send it out for, for signature and et cetera, all within that infrastructure. You don't have to export it out, save it into Adobe, open it into Adobe Acrobat desktop. You don't have to take the document 
and uh, upload it into adobe.com to your Adobe account, it all works within your Office 365 suite. So again, it just makes it more seamless. There's less clicks. I don't have to log out and log in. I don't have to export and re-import or anything like that. So as you can see in the example I have here on the screen, there was a document that I have highlighted there. And when I clicked on that, you see in the background, this is the PDF and I have the option to click on edit and start making changes to it. Uh, when you do this, it actually transfers it seamlessly over to the adobe.com services and allows you to do everything uh, within the web browser for adobe.com and your pro license or subscription that you have. So those are, those are the steps I'm going through on how you can fill out and sign a PDF and how you can send it out to somebody. Before we conclude, I know that's kind of a, a very fast overview of how to do this. It really is that simple. But obviously, I'll have this available on our YouTube channel so you can watch this later. Uh, if you would like to have uh, more information or get more in-depth training about this, please reach out to us and let me know. I'd be happy to follow up and provide that for you. Now, uh, questions. There's a chat window over here to your left. We have a few minutes left. I'd like to leave this open to you to ask some questions about either e-signatures or using Adobe Acrobat for that. And I see one of them there, a question was, is that to say that someone without a subscription and only has Adobe Reader can still do the signature? That is correct. That is correct. The only person who needs a license to this is the person who's sending it out. The recipient doesn't need to have anything other than a computer or a phone to be able to uh, do the signature on their end and send it back to you. Other questions? That was a good question. One question I do get frequently is, uh, do, do I need to have, what, what version of Adobe do I need to have to be able to do this? Well, it, it does need to be a subscription. It can't be just a purchased license. So you would have to have the subscription to Adobe Acrobat. Uh, and like I said, that is typically $203 and some change per year. Uh, so if you're interested in the license for that, let me know. I can help you with that as well. Uh, that's usually billed annually. So for each user that would need to have that. And most people usually get the pro version because it gives them the most flexibility with editing the PDFs, including doing redactions and things like that. Uh, but it also works with the standard version as well. Uh, Price-wise, the difference between the standard and the pro version is pretty minuscule. So normally most of the users that we've dealt with and I've talked to typically go with the pro version, which I think a lot of you already have anyway to use for that. But it does require the subscription, not just the desktop license. Oh, and by the way, if you're using an older version of Adobe Acrobat, you would need to be on the latest release of Adobe Acrobat to take advantage of this. So if you did have the subscription, but you had an older version installed, you hadn't been keeping it up to date, you would need to install, install the latest version, which is uh, Adobe Acrobat DC 2022. Uh, now DC was a, uh, a version that they started using a number of years ago, but there are year, year dates attached to them now. So Adobe Acrobat Pro DC and then the year, which would be 2022. That's the latest version that is out there. Very good. Well, if you do have any further questions, would like some more training or a one-on-one -on, -one on how to utilize this, licensing or et cetera, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We'd be happy to help you with that. Info at terrapintechnology.com. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we put all of our webinars and these infomars out there so that you can watch them and rewatch them as you need to, to stay informed about technology. Thank you very much for attending today. It was great to have you. We look forward to sending out another note for our webinar next month. Stay tuned. Thank you.